Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to get those Houdini particles with those special attributes over into Blender 4.2 and render them out in cycles. This is gonna bring over our P scale, like the size of our particles, and we're gonna bring over our color attributes. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do. But first I wanna give a shout out to the guy that helped me do this, Daniel, you know who you are, and thank you so much for your help. The first thing we're gonna do in Houdini is we're gonna create a sphere and then we'll drop down a pop network and plug that in. And when we dive into the pop network, we're gonna give it a couple of attributes um, to make it look a little bit nicer. So let's click on the input and on the attributes, we're going to add velocity in the Y positive. So it'll go upwards. And I think we should increase the birth rate. So let's come in here and increase this by changing this number right here. And now we'll just get a little bit more particles. Next, let's add in some pop forces. So if you come in here, you can look for the pop force and plug this in. And in here, you want to change the amplitude and this will give us some randomization. And we also want to uh, throw in a pop fluid. It just makes it feel a little bit more organic. And you can see it starts turning into kind of a fluid, but some of these particles are flying out a little too fast. So we can throw down what's called a pop speed limit. And by turning on this, we can turn the speed limit down, the maximum speed, and we'll see it slows the overall particles down. And let's uh, decrease the particle separation, and this way we're getting this nice kind of fluid looking animation. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. So after this, I wanna show you a little trick. If you wanna view your particle size, make sure you go into, you press D and change your particles to points to disks. And then when you put down something like a random uh, attribute randomize right now it's on cd which is color let's change this to p scale which is the radius of the points and if you uh, lower the global scale now you can see the randomization taking effect on our particles before you can see this but if you change it from points to discs on your display now you can see how the scale is being affected then let's get that color so we're going to add a color node in so here's the color node and the cool thing with the color node is we can come in here and we can choose how to make a color from an attribute. We have all these attributes, so we're gonna add age. And so the beginning of the life, we're gonna make it white, and then maybe we'll uh, change it to like a yellow. And then we'll go something like an orange color, just by adding these colors. And the very last, we will do like a red. Okay, and then if we scroll the range, we can actually change it so that the age is changing color in different areas at different times super easy to add in this color and i think that's looking pretty good so our next goal is getting this information over into blender and again shout out to daniel for showing me this but what you need to put down this is the key is you need to do an attribute delete and in this delete you need to turn off delete non-selected and we need to now select the ones we want so just do color and then then make a space and type p scale so we're going to get the color and we're going to get that scale of the particles that we did and that's all you need something happens with blender where it gets confused so now that we have all this we need to export it and do an, a usd export this is going to be the best format to do this in come in here and choose your file path and make sure when you name the file type dot usd in order to get it in the right format, the right USD format. Hit accept. And now we need to choose the frame range. Come in here and we're just gonna trim our simulation down to like 140. And then you're gonna hit save to disk. And this is gonna save that USD file with that particle information in there. All right, so now let's jump over into Blender 4.2. And you can drag in your USDs or you come in here and you just find your USD file. I've tested out the new 4.2 and it looks like you can drag in FBX, Olympic, but look at this, our USDs are playing back no problem. And I think this is a new feature in Blender 4.2 that now it brings in particles automatically as little spheres. And we can see we already have our P scale. And if I hit render, it's already looking pretty decent, but we need to get that color information. in. so you need to add a geometry nodes. Just like you would do this if you had any particles that you wanted to color in a specific way. So let's zoom in here. And all you need to add is a simple set material. And that's gonna ask for a material. So let's create a material, come over here, add a new material, and then select that one we just created. 
And then if we go into our shader properties of that material, let's add an attribute. And this is what we're gonna name it. Now, I thought originally that if you typed CD, which is what it's called in Houdini, that it would work, but it's actually called display color with a capital C on color. Let me zoom in here so you guys can actually see this. So change it to display color and voila, you have your color in. So that's it guys. You have your color in there and you have your P scale. Those were the two things that I've been wanting to get in there. And I've tried a bunch of different ways. And now it's nice that we can finally do it easily. And that's it. It's that simple and look how good they look. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like it, share it, and uh, hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out and I would really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video.